So every Wednesday we're starting with this um, struggling Christian. I hope it's been helpful to you. It's amazing how we get locked into thinking so many things, myself included, and so this study's been helping me out, and I've been trying to get as much information as I can on this from all sorts of different people, and because I, I need light on it. If I had light on it, I'd be, I guess, really perfected on this deal about the dominance of sin and uh, thought life and, and my will, and, and but I need to be refreshed all the time, and this study's helping me, uh, you know, and, and so I hope it helps you. Uh, but what we need to consider this week is Christ in me and I in him. And uh, salvation is two-sided. It's a two-sided coin. You got side A and you have side B, amen? Uh, side A represents Jesus coming into the believer. Side B represents the believer coming into Jesus. And there is two sides to the coin. Um, and uh, this is a package deal. You cannot get it one-sided. He is in me, and I am in him. Now, these are simple words, and we say it all the time. We say, yeah, I know that stuff, but we don't know that stuff. We really don't because we can tell we don't practice it. And uh, so this is what the study studies about, this struggling Christian, because uh, you're going to find out just from the verse of the Word of God that you already know that there are verses that will drive a person crazy if you think about them. You know, when, when, when you're supposed to be dead and he says you're dead and you, you stub your toe, my goodness, I mean, right away you got a conflict. Right? I mean, you look at the verse that says you're dead and all of a sudden you got pain in your toe. You get a stomach ache. You get sick. You know, you look at that verse and say, what are you talking about? I'm dead. I'm not dead. I'm alive. I can feel. You see, there's some things in that Bible that are, that are deep, but you as a Christian will know them when the Word of God hits, hits home and it'll help us out. For every verse in the New Testament that states that the believer is indwelt by Christ, you will discover 10 verses that state the believer indwells Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Now, there every verse that you come across that says, what? Jesus indwells me. He's in there. He's in there. 10 to 1 ratio. There's more verses that say that you're in him. And that's important to know. So the off-balance diet of side A, what is that? that straight salvation messages will not bring us to maturity. You understand that? Side A is getting him in you. That's salvation. If that's the only diet you have is salvation, you're going to have a hard time maturing. You really will. I needed to understand side B more now that I'm saved. Uh, what does the Bible say about God's accomplishment for you in Christ? How does this solve the problem of your alienation from him? Remember that in Ephesians 1.4? Go to Ephesians 1.4. <clears throat> it says in 1.4, it says, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him, in love we're talking about how in the world does this solve the problem of your alienation from him <laughs> with a verse like that you know what alienate means right away from God you know something stops you in some way God chose us now you have to listen to this because some people are going to swear I'm hyper Calvinist or something it's hard when you get in a deeper life they're going to think that anyway in some way God chose us in him now that doesn't mean we didn't have a choice but God saw the problem before time began. He saw your need before you even had one. Can you get that? That's from God's point of view. And if you saw that verse that we just read, that sort of like helps you out a little bit. Ultimately, he went to the cross. Where were you? Ultimately, he went to the cross. So where were you? in him just follow along with us now as he died you too were crucified the difference is that you deserved it and he didn't okay now when it gets foggy and clouded just hang on it was not your body that died if you can get this it was nothing physical it was spiritual spiritual 
See, that rebel you, that spiritually dead to God you, that spirit son of Satan was crucified with Christ. See, it doesn't matter if you believe it. It matters what the scripture says. It's the only thing we got to go on this whole spiritual life, this, if I can use the word spooky, is the Bible. Right? I mean, haven't you come across those verses? Mortify your flesh? I remember the first time I read that. Oh, I got to commit suicide now? You want me to commit suicide? At times, you know, yeah, it sounded good. But that is what he was talking about. Then he tells me I'm crucified in Christ. Maybe you haven't was perplexed over them verses. I can remember all of a sudden a light going on one day and I was getting a little bit of so my wife was going crazy. She couldn't handle that. She couldn't even think of that. No, 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 I'm, I'm alive. I mean, I'm touching you. I'm not dead, I'm alive. So all we can do is go to scriptures, right? Read what the Bible says. And by the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, believe them. Believe what it says. If we believe what it says, then it'll take care of a lot of the guilt, right, and the depression and junk that we go through. If we can believe what it says about us. And that's the key thing. Uh, if, if we're talking about that rebel you, you know, that spiritually dead to God you, that spirit son of Satan. Somebody says, well, I want a spirit son of Satan. Well, if you had a dead spirit, who are you serving? You couldn't serve God. When you got saved, he, he made your spirit alive. That's how you communicate with him. Uh, Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. And we'll be hitting that verse a lot until maybe we can see some of it. These verses are so important, and your King James Bible is so important. You, you wouldn't understand it unless you started looking at other versions and understood the tenses that they use. See, it's not, the Bible says not that um, I am being crucified with Christ or going to be crucified with Christ. See, this is all past tense, man. It says, I am crucified with Christ. I mean, boom, I'm crucified with Christ. Look what it says. I live. What a contradiction if you think about that. Just think about that. Crucifixion kills you, man. And then the next breath it says, I live. See, that's why you got to forget about the physical. We're in the spiritual realm now. It says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Now watch it. And the life which I now live in the what? Flesh. Get a hold of that. That's now. That's you. That's pinching your body. I live by the faith of who? Remember Sunday night? Faith is a victor. The faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now go to Romans chapter 6. And you teenagers need to get... Boy, if you get a hold of this ahead of time, what a blessing it will be to yourself. Because us adults have enough problem with the dominance of sin. You get a teenager all fired up with the hormones and everything, they got, man, they're just, they're just, they're just crazy. <laughs> they think they've got no hope. They think they've got no power. I mean, they're teenagers after all. They, they've got to do these things because they're teenagers. That's baloney. If you're saved, these verses belong to you too. In, in chapter 6 of Romans, and look at verse 6. Knowing this, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with who with him who's him jesus christ when did he die well before paul wrote this and he's saying that the old man get the connection the old man who's the old man your flesh what the other verse says you can live this by who the faith of the son of god what can you live that christian life where in the flesh What's the flesh? The old man. The old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin, now watch it, the body of sin, amen? That's all your members. Might be what? Destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve what? So see, when I use an excuse or you use an excuse that you got to do something like that and you're saved, you don't have Bible. You just ain't got Bible. What you got is a nasty, bad, stinking habit. And what is that? That's the old man. 
Are you perf perfect preacher? No, but I, at least I'm understanding this stuff. And I know that there's power available to me to do what? Live the Christian life. And that that body shouldn't stop me from doing it. And um, so now, many other verses in the Word of God state categorically that all believers died when Christ died. It's not a progressive thing. I mean, when God says you were crucified with Christ, guess what? Bless God, you were crucified with Christ. When you exercised your will to be saved, you said, God saved me, boom, it happened. And now God's up here like a helicopter. Remember we started off with an avenue? Remember I said, let's, let's pretend like we've got an avenue here, like a road, and, and, and on that road you've got a bunch of houses, and, and the first house will be B, like you were born, we'll just say, you know, and the second house will be S, maybe salvation. Well, you see... We can only see things house per house. But God is hoovering over the whole thing. So when you read verses like, In Christ before the foundation of the world, that's heavy stuff. But guess who can handle heavy? God can handle heavy. Why? Because it's God's stuff. But you and I, when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, man, he already saw us crucified in him. The old man's dead to him. I mean, it's, it's already been done. Ain't that, ain't, that's not spooky to you? I thought about that like I lost my brain one night. I was, God, it's God. That proves me there's a God. Only he can think of stuff like this. Other people get hung up on predestination, these other kinds of words in the Bible, because you try to think you're God and you're not God. If you just understand the Bible, what it says is what it means. If the Bible says I'm crucified in Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth where? In me, in the life that I now live, I live by the faith of who? This one guy says, well, you know, faith over here says this. I said, why don't you read the whole Bible? You know, there's an action faith, you know, verbs, you got nouns, you got the faith, which is the whole scripture. When it's talking about contending for the faith. But let me ask you this. If Christ moved in you, where did he leave his faith? I mean, when you got Christ, did you get all of him? Did the Bible say we're, we're all in all, we're in Christ, we've got all things? Okay. See, if you start using the Scripture, whether you understand it all or not, it is Scripture. It'll help you. I mean, when the devil says you, you, you're, you're lost because of this, this, and this, usually don't happen right away. You know, you know, the devil's sort of nice. He's a nice guy. He waits to get a little knowledge, then he starts messing with you. He knows how to twist scripture. He knows how to kick you out of the bed. He knows how to give you lost feelings. He knows how to mess your whole life up. The devil knows how to do that. He really does. But he can't mess with you if you got the Bible. If you got, it is written, it is written, it is written. I mean, that's what works. So no matter what anybody preaches or what anybody teaches, relax. The Holy Ghost is in control, amen? But if you keep getting rocking and rolling, and you keep getting all messed up, it's because you don't know your Bible. Getting saved, side A is easy. B is what we got to work on. See, it's not Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's us in Christ. When I think about Christ in me, I always think about maybe he may exit. I mean, even though I get those verses, we're sealed. I just somehow, I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm you know, my mind sometimes, the devil comes picking my pocket. But when I think about me being in him, and I really think about me being in him, Man, that's exciting. I mean, don't you know the devil can't even, can't, man, he better not even put his hands on Christ. He can't even touch Christ. Can you get a picture of that? If the devil's up there and all the hordes of demons and devils and goblins and whoever else is up there, bless God, they can't approach him. They know better. There's, there's no spiring match between God and the devil. That's in Hollywood. My goodness, the holiness of God? Man, if, that, if God didn't want the devil up there parading around, he wouldn't have been up there. He's powerful. So you're in him. That's good. What does that mean? He can't touch you. I mean, that's, that's a, that, that could be a good feeling if you wanted one. Some people don't want to understand that, but we're going to help you out here. If, if you let us, I'm not charging 50 bucks a half hour, an hour for a cycle analyzing you and trying to, you know, give you a few little cutie counseling moments. I'm just trying to give you a Bible that you can look at yourself 
And if it's talking about you and your relationship to Christ, you ought to pay attention. So, you and I were executed in Christ. According to side B, you see, God executed everything about you. He could not tolerate in his holy presence. <laughs> he couldn't tolerate what in you in his holy presence? Anything. He did not like you. You were unlovable. You were unholy. You were wretched and undone. You were a festering sore. Only place you belonged was in hell. So he executed you. With who? The perfect sacrifice. Who's that? Jesus Christ. Why did he kill his son? Because of you. You get the picture? So you were crucified with him, according to God. And buried. He buried you with Jesus. You still in Romans here? Go to Romans chapter 6. See, I can read all the books in my library. I got, man, I got deeper life. I got, I got, I think 50 books in my bottom shelf. Watch me need the whole ball of wax. I, I mean, I read everything like that. I didn't understand nothing. I mean, I read it, but it scared me. I remember, I remember I, at Galilee, I had to teach uh, Crucified Life by Maxwell. Here I am teaching Crucified Life, didn't know nothing about it. I read the book, scared me to death. And somebody said, well, I still don't understand it. I said, well, eventually it'll dawn on you. You know why I said that? Because he said it in the book. But if they really pushed me and pushed me, I'd say, man, I don't know. I'm just reading the book, man. It says this got to happen. Then the other books you read about, you know, it's always these people with, with hoses going through their nose and being injected with stuff and uh, got arms off and legs off and the other ones crucified for Christ. And I started getting scared. I said, wait a minute, man. I don't, I don't even think I like this now. In other words, anybody that wants to crucify life, you got to be in a hospital bed somewhere. You got to be sick so that your body's totally out of control and whacked out and weak and all you can do is trust Christ, I guess. Because whenever you go meet somebody that's crucified in other words they don't care about the body they're just being their real self they give you a blessing when you see them in the hospital they cheer you up so all I could think about is oh no here we go all in books that was the conclusion I got to but there's a lot of people that's crucified with Christ that isn't don't have the headaches don't have the back aches don't have all that stuff they just got the key they got the key to surrender so when we're doing this and all the books you read, you're going to find out the key is surrendered. Absolute surrender. I imagine that would be the key. But anyway, God couldn't stand us. Amen. <laughs> Romans 6, 4. Look what it says. What the Bible says. The Bible says, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so we, see that kemosabi, we, Paul, you, me, everybody saved, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Newness of life. Not the old way, newness of life. Go to Colossians chapter 2. Did you ever notice how when somebody's trying to put you in bondage, they usually don't go to the verses that Paul has because Paul messes up a lot of people and the next thing you know they'll tell us that we what we worship Paul and not Jesus Christ and that's so idiotic and stupid I mean if you're in Christ you're gonna appreciate Paul but here in Colossians chapter 2 and uh, Verse 12, here it is again. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him, now watch it, through the faith of you. Do you see that? Through the faith of you, right? No, let's look at the verse. Buried with him in bapti baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. Then you go through the other verses. I don't want to get next. I'm getting spiritual circumcision next. We're not going to do that yet. Water baptism is a figure or a pantomime 
of your co-death and rebirth in Christ. That's what it is. What actually happened to you when I, Melissa went under that water, she was buried with Christ. I mean, according to God, the Father blessed God, she was buried with Christ. And when she rose again, she was raised with Christ to walk in newness of life. It's a figure. That's all it is. It doesn't save you. doesn't do nothing. But that's all it's represented as the gospel. Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But in that gospel, there's deep things. Deep things. And in God's point of view, when he saw you, you were crucified with who? Christ. Because he couldn't stand the old man. Why did Christ get crucified? Because of your sin. No sin, no crucifixion. So we are all in him. So when you got saved, as deep as it sounds, you died. You died. Watchman Nee points out, every Christian believes there were two thieves crucified with Christ on Calvary. But there's more biblical ink dedicated to our death on the cross. In other words, if I asked you, hey, two thieves died on the cross with uh, Jesus, you say, yeah, sure. I asked you, did you die on the cross with Jesus? Most of them don't even think about that. If the federal head of the human race was Adam, amen, and all died in Adam, then all are made alive in the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ. Well, why won't we believe that? We have to come to grips with the reality of Scripture which tells us what died. What died? Everything about the former you that God could not tolerate in His holy presence. The old you, your old spiritual identity, was executed and replaced by a lovely, new, godly you. Whether you believe that or not, that's Scripture. In Christ, at salvation, you were not only given a new present and a new future, but you were also given a new past. Your spiritual roots are no longer in Adam, but in Christ. That's why you were from the beginning with Christ. That's heavy. If you get that, help me out. I mean, it's heavy. That means when you look back, we always say our old roots or our old, you know, in God's sight, what are you talking about? You're in Christ. You're in Christ for the foundation of the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw the problem. I remedied the problem. Yeah. See, down your street from birth to house S, amen, he saw you. He saw you exercise your will in house S. He saw you ahead of time. Who? God. What is that? Foreknowledge. Who? You, smarty aleck? No, God. That's what God thinks problem with religious people they try thinking like God in a sense where they think they're hoovering over everything you can get a problem with that because you're in time right now you're in prison in time you're doing time amen and you got short time you're doing short time and now I'm wondering when he keeps taking all these uh, good people I'm thinking if they got out early for good behavior I'm developing a message on that because honest to goodness, everybody I know that's, I mean, really, as a rule, I'm, I know it's a lot of good people that God takes. And he leaves the wretch on the block, amen? Now, can you get that now? Ain't that heavy? I mean, really think about that. I mean, when you, when you died in Christ, I mean, everything was destroyed. You got no roots. I mean, when somebody looks up your birth certificate up in heaven, it goes back to Christ. I mean, think about that. Up in heaven right now, your birth certificate's God. You know, God says, hey, that's my boy. Yeah, I was there when he got birthed. Amen. Here's his birth certificate right here. St. Bob. Amen. But down here, what do I view? I view Sinner Bob. Think about Sinner Bob. Think about the past of Sinner Bob. You want me to get into Ralph and Bob again? Would that help you? But when you think about that too much, guess what you're doing? You're thinking about something that is irrelevant to God. 
because God don't think like you. His ways are far above your ways, past finding out. What do you got to go on? The Word of God. Why are we sticklers on the King James Bible? Because they're messing with the Word of God. See, when they mess with your Word of God, in essence, they're messing with a recorded view of your identity. Even though you're saved and you know your identity, generations down the line that don't have this book and have all these verses messing with, you know what? It's going to be hard for them to figure out what? Their true identity. They're going to know something happened to them, but the stuff that you struggle with and you need to grow out of, the Holy Spirit helps you to grow out of, He uses the Word of God. See, so it's not just being totally fanatical on the King James Bible just because we're cultic. It's about the pure words of God that we know are preserved. You got Christ's blood for your sins. You have Christ's body for your identity change. You have Christ's spirit for your life change. Hebrews 9.22b, and you don't have to turn there, but just trust me. <laughs> Hebrews 9.22b, without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. There's no remission for sins, amen? Our sin problem, that's your performance. Sure it is. Remember, at the beginning of the study, everybody believes they have to work. Work to please God. Work to get saved. Work, work, work. Your performance is evidence of your sin nature. Anyway. So our sin problem was solved by God through the shed blood of Jesus. Number two. Then the source, your old man. God solved the problem through the body of Christ on the cross. Hebrews 10.10. 10. What did he say? Once and for all. You were sanctified set apart that was the body of Christ blood of Christ sin problem your body the old man body problem Christ died for you that goes on beyond forgiveness through the body of Christ you experience a change in identity you were changed from sinner to saint it means a new creature in Christ we have been made pure and holy before God through the body of Christ that's our identity. Then you have through the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, you have exchanged your old Adamic life for Christ's life. By His indwelling Spirit, He longs to ex uh, express Himself through you and fellowship with you. So you got Christ's blood, Christ's blood, body, and Christ's Spirit. It takes all three, all three, to give you victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. See, so you need to understand a little bit about what's going on with your salvation. Somebody said, well, you don't need all that junk. I think you do. I think if it's in the Bible, you need it. Somebody before, I got this, this uh, study from somebody, and he's saying the more you preachers preach on that double nature, the more people are going to sin. Because you keep telling about that, that nature, that other nature. I'm trying, I mean, what is this guy, nuts? You'd rather just have me preach the hell out of you and you don't know why you're doing what you're doing half the time? That's, that's crazy, man. That's why people go insane. That's why people all of a sudden say, I'm not saved. Because I keep thinking this way. I keep doing this stuff. I can't be saved. You know why you ain't got victory? You're not looking at some of these scriptures. What does the Bible have to do with it? Most everything. You go to them scriptures, you find out your true identity, and you start there. If you're in Christ, you were crucified with him. Nevertheless, you're living. It's sort of a paradox, you know, but it's, it's just the way that the Bible's worded to let you understand about your old man before an almighty, holy God. is isn't even recognized. How can it be recognized? How can your old man be recognized? You know what holy means? Holy. What part of your old man was holy? Christ had to die because of your old man on the cross. And that's all of them. Every hair, all the way down to the fungus on your toenail, bless God. Everything about you stank to God. 
And that's what proves his love to us, you see. He, he didn't have to. But will you understand how unholy you are, the old man, and how holy God is? And he looked beyond all that and saved you anyway. Then you understand how much he loves you. So what is it exactly you can do that he'll not love you any longer? Nothing. I mean, he loves you. The chastisement, um, the circumstances, these things are just trying to show you what you're supposed to be and who you are in this world. The more you want to play with the old man, the old side, the Holy Spirit's locked up in you. Ain't leaving. It doesn't like it. You dug up a corpse. And you refuse to live your life the way it's supposed to be lived. So God brings certain circumstances in our life to make us aware of the fact that you're supposed to be serving him. And you serve him because you what? Because of the spankings? Because all that stuff? No, you grow out of that. You serve him because you love him. Spankings ought to start getting fewer and fewer. Because you're starting to understand that God just, hey, wake up, fool. You say, how can God do that? What well, are three persons in the Godhead? Bless God for that doctrine. Or you couldn't understand what was going on with you. You think you, right? You think you were lost every time you sinned. But he arranged that thing in a balance. And I thank God for it. I thank God you can look at the Bible, get those verses, and whether you believe them right now or not, they're in there. And you need to keep reading them. And you need to see yourself in that position. Because if you don't, you're going to be depressed. How else can you be depressed? Wouldn't de Why wouldn't you be depressed? I mean, it's a messed up world, man. That's why you get Christians that are, and are worried about jobs, worried about this, worried about everything except the relationship with God. I understand that. You know, you talk to people, they're bummed out and depressed. Well, then take your drugs, bless God. Get filled up with some dope or something. Do something to kill your flesh. Maybe God could talk to you then. Amen? Get La La Land. Maybe he can talk to you then. He'll talk to your spirit because your, your man definitely be out of whack. You know what God will do? God will, God will let you get all whacked out and he'll still take care of you. And you come out of your whacked up state and say, I wonder why I'm still all right. And can't even figure out God is trying to teach you something. He's in charge of everything. I mean, you could be locked up in a nut house 20 years and God provided for you in your living and when you come out, you couldn't even get the fact that he loves you and took care of you and you're in your right mind. That's the way we are. So you need to get a hold of some of these verses and understand why do I keep doing the things I'm doing then? Because sin dwelleth every time I want to do Evil is present with me. So he says, well, that's because the devil is omniscient. No, that's because your old man's hanging on you. You can't leave yet. But if you don't surrender to it, right? If you don't yield, you won't grow. You won't learn. That's the whole point of it. I mean, how could, right? I mean, if I respond the wrong way like I did Wednesday, I mean, I make a little light of it, but I thought about that. I really thought about that. Even though the per some people aggravate me, you know, and they're so stupid sometimes. I'm, God's saying, you're stupid. Some people can't help it. <laughs> they really can't help it. I'm saying, but I can't stand it. And he says, that's the problem, Bob. I said, well, stop it, God. I don't need this aggravation. Oh, well, you need a whole lot of aggravation, Bob. I can see it now. You're getting, you're getting worse. You're worse than Bob. Woo! I said, well, now what am I supposed to do? Listen to your wife every now and then, at least once, you know, out of ten times. She said, and I talked to other people, they said they knew it was coming out of your mouth when that girl said what she said. They just knew that the preacher was going to respond like he re responded. And I said, man, they got me figured out. There's something wrong. I should have said to the young lady, this is a Wednesday night service, and what we're talking about now is business of the local church. Uh, you know, appreciate your input, but... It's not needed, you know, or something. No, I just, you know, basically told her to shut her mouth and we're in a church thing. She didn't go to our church. But when I said it, I didn't think I was doing bad because that was, that was still coming out of my character, see, of my old man. Because I thought it was just perfectly, I thought it was, everybody understand, you know. I didn't think she'd be hurt. 
And then she came up to me and she was telling me, well, are you mad at me? And I says, no, I should be mad at you. I just thought it was like nonchalant. Just shut up and sit there. You ain't a member of the church. Bless God, don't talk about it. I mean, you know, no big deal to me. But it was heavy to her and her feelings. So I got to thinking about that. You know, I usually say, let's just fly where they fly. But I said, man, God starts saying, yeah, but Bob, where is her spiritual growth? Does she have family problems? Does she have problems? Does she call us 10, 11 o'clock at night? Yeah. So, Bob, what's the problem with that? You got a problem with that? Would Jesus listen to her? Oh, here we go with this hippie stuff. What would Jesus do? Yeah. What would he do, Bob? I guess you'd listen. Do I listen to you, Bob? Do I listen to you when you're in the flesh and you're just yelling at me and stuff and saying I did you a dirty dog or something in your heart and stuff? Yeah, you listen to me when I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So he says, okay, what's the problem? I just say, well, sir, there's no problem at all. What do I have to do? I have to yield to him. You know, it's rough, but you got to do it sometimes. Somebody's got to do it, I guess. Isn't it good when Christ lives through you? I mean, don't you know when he's doing it? Don't you have peace? Come on, aren't you? I mean, aren't you happy when you do? I mean, it just seems like everything's smooth, man. I mean, nobody can get you mad. Honest. I mean, really, they come on and you just say, well, okay, yeah, we'll pray for me. Everything be all right, yeah. It's like you walk on, it's like, it's, it's really good. It, it's a good feeling. Instead of putting up all them defenses all the time and your pride was hurt, or somebody hurts you here, or something, and you go back to the old man, and then, then, then when they narrow in on you, you say, well, well, you know, you shouldn't do this or that, then you start going to your past, don't you? And we always go to our roots. Well, you didn't know my daddy. You didn't know my mama. You didn't know how I was treated. And right, right away, we're digging up, there's all old man junk. So you got to grow up. That's dead. I know it affected your brain. I know you're a little messed up over it, but guess what? That's the old man's brain, amen. You got to get God. Because if God don't remember your sins, why do you keep digging them up? Who's giving you the shovel? Who's giving you the shovel? Man, the devil's going to hand you a shovel, man, put it in your hand and help you dig sometimes. And what are you going to be like? You're going to be messed up and miserable. And if somebody sat you down and looked at you across the table and said, why are you acting like this? You know you're saved. Why are you, why are you doing this? You know what you do? You go, well, I know. What do you mean, well, you know? So that's why we're doing this study, to help me and you out, amen? So that the devil won't keep us down as long, amen, as normal. So we can get some victory and find out that God is powerful. My goodness, he can, he can just move stars out of the way and jump. Man, he can take cars, move them away from you so you can go down the road. He could take that storm we just had down and just move it around away from our people when we pray. See, I got to believe that I prayed and my prayers helped me and mine. I got to believe that. Ah, oh, it's just a change of Mother Nature. No, no, I'm believing my prayers. I'm just going to start believing this Bible. I think God listens to us. I think he answers our prayers. I really do. And uh, we need to keep doing that and keep understanding. You teenagers, you get a hold of them verses that I gave you because they're your verses too. Right, Samuel? Right? Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. So when you, when you feel like that urge to do the bad things and you're being swayed by peer pressure, amen? You need to what? Relax. You know, take a deep breath. Say, Lord, I need your help. I am not used to living like this, the Christian life that is. So I need your help to help me. Why don't you give him a break every now and then? Let him, let him see what he'll do for you. Wouldn't it be a blessing if all of a sudden you were ready to, ready to go off and have that dominance of sin over your body and, and, and get you messed up and all of a sudden you just surrendered to God? I mean, you just said, God help, and he did? He took the flush. The, the embarrassment of sin away from you instantly and gave you power I, I don't know about you but that's a blessing when that happens that's peace it's like and then you start thinking you say man God just he just took that man he took that urge just took it right away wow he can do that and you start developing that relationship and guess what you get to be young ladies young men you got more power than a lot of adults got in these churches you start understanding the power of the Holy Spirit of God in you. You understand that you're saved and you're saved forever and nobody can take that from you. That you do have authority. According to that Bible. According to Romans. According to Colossians. According to Ephesians. You're in Christ. I think it's a blessing. Okay. That's it.
Uh, uh, gals on the right, guys on the left, and we'll have a, a season of prayer here.